Good evening. Uh, happy Tuesday to you all. Uh, we're trying things out just slightly differently tonight. We've got a, a new headset, which I hope uh, will improve the audio quality a little bit more than we were getting from my uh, PS5 headset. So do let me know how it sounds compared to previous streams. Uh, in addition to that, I've tweaked a couple of settings on Football Manager, so hopefully uh, we don't get... Uh, breaks in stream when we are processing games so fingers crossed things will look a little bit smoother um, for those of you first time here i'm adwin84 you can call me adam uh, and we've, we're, we're streaming a little bit of football manager uh, we are currently playing as rangers um, having started our career over in sweden i've just brought up on the chat the uh, a brief background of where we are so far let's see how we go so last time we uh, had a pretty good night actually uh, we won number of games losing just one game away to sporting uh, but still managing to beat them on penalties to get through to the round of 16 in the Europa League uh, and in the league pretty much a clean sweep um, I believe if I remember rightly we started the night with the uh, a visit the visit of Leicester uh, who narrowly beat us in a game again that we actually dominated and this is this is a pattern we are seeing quite a bit uh, we are dominating a lot of games that we're playing, um, even against teams such as Leicester, who are arguably a, a larger side, uh, at least have better resources than we do. We're doing better than they are most of the time, but they're just we're just not winning. We were just weren't winning those games. However, as you can see, we are taking quite a few wins along the way, uh, beating Hearts, Dundee, Ross County all quite comfortably, uh, beating Sporting 2-0 in the first leg of the knockout playoff in the Europa League losing the second leg but still managing to get through in the worst penalty shootout ever known um, it, if you were there it was as you know it was incredible uh, I think Sporting missed their first three penalties we scored our first two then missed the next two or Sporting scored their next two and we did just sneak in the last penalty but none of the penalties were good even the ones that went in were not convincing but regardless, we made it through to the round of 16 where we took on Atalanta. After three more wins in the league, we did play that first leg against Atalanta where we took a 1-0 win, uh, much to my surprise. It certainly wasn't the result I was expecting to see, but I'm delighted that we did get it. In front of a nearly capacity crowd at Ibrox, uh, we, tonight we will see the second leg against Atalanta. But first up, we do have uh, a visit to Hibernium. Uh, we then have Atalanta in the uh, second leg and then we've got a, a double header with Dundee at Ibrox as we face them in the Scottish Cup quarter final and the uh, Premiership as we come towards the Championship phase. Uh, in the Premiership we are just one point off the top of the league. Hibernian up there by the grace of one goal. Uh, <clears throat> from Aberdeen is second. Celtic do have a game in hand, however, so they are likely to jump up to top when they do play that game. And I don't believe we've got Celtic until the, the championship phase of the season, so our aim is to win the next four league games and give ourselves the best position possible of at least being second. Uh, I do expect that Hibernian and Aberdeen may drop a point or two along the next four games and it'll be us and Celtic hopefully fighting it out for the title in the championship phase. So without further ado, let's start clicking forward. So welcome everyone. Uh, I am still uh, very much a new streamer. This is uh, something I'm just still toying with at the moment. And the reason I'm doing it is is really just for something to do. It's <laughs> no more complex than that. I, I would ordinarily be spending my nights playing Football Manager, uh, three or four nights a week probably. So I figured why not do it while trying to chat to people. My wife doesn't want to sit and talk to me while I'm playing Football Manager. So perhaps you nice folks will instead. If it's your first time to the stream, if it's your first time to this channel, please feel free to drop in with any questions you have. Um, any 
if you think you can, you know, if you've got any tips you want to share, feel free to drop in the chat. Tell me what I'm doing wrong with streaming, with Football Manager, with with life in general. Um, and we'll see if we can make a conversation out of that. Alternatively, come talk to me about how your day is going. How's your week so far? Obviously, we just had a bank holiday weekend and it was... Um, well, it's certainly down south and the weather was fine best best way i can put it uh, and hello george must welcome back hope you're doing probably bedtime for you quite soon but hopefully you can stick around with me for, for a little while at least so as we jump forward to get this game against hibernian who as i said uh, we want to drop points and hopefully we will be the cause of that your oh your bedtime in twelve minutes. Oh well, thank you for joining us for those twelve minutes at least. I'll I'll do you the uh, I'll do you the courtesy of not talking about uh, Sunday night until you've gone to bed because I know it'll just make you jealous. So we jump into the first press conference of the night. I'm still looking for, I'm not, I'm not really actively looking, but if anyone does have an answer to the question of whether your assistant manager can really mess things up for you in a press conference, please, please do come and let me know. Um, I really want to just hand it over to my assistant so that I don't have to click through these on the uh, live stream, but still terrified that my assistant manager is going to cock it all up for me and create some sort of hassle with a player or a uh, manager or even the FA. So, uh, yeah, do do let me know if you've had experience with turning off um, press conferences or, or rather handing them over to your assistant manager. Yeah, let's not say anything nice about Hibs. Uh, okay. Do, do, do. No, I'm not doing tactics. Why would I let you all know? Um, yeah, we love football. Pressure. Ha, what pressure? We're going to win. Although it does rather sound like I struggle against Hibs. And straight... Uh, uh, Rangers also seem to struggle against Hibs, so let's see if we can turn that around tonight, shall we? Injuries we could do without. We do have a backup left back, though, don't we? Yeah, Terry Small, uh, passable, can do good. He can do a job. So, George Mus, how's the audio tonight compared to previous streams? You see, I've got the, the new headset that uh, my brother brought round, actually, that he'd been using for work. It's harder to hear my voice nearly full volume. Okay, thank you for the heads up. Let's see what we can do about that, shall we? How is that? Is that any better? Okay. 
This is the bit where you tell me it's just blown your eardrums or something, isn't it? It was the TV. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, right. Let's get this team in to gear. So we do have do have second leg away to At Atalanta, but I do think for me the priority is the league. So we're going to see if we can go first team for this league game. We'll try and rest players in training for a couple of days to make sure that at least some of them make it into the Atalanta game. But this is my priority. I want the league. It's even more clear. Brilliant. That's good to know. It is good to know. That's what we've. That's what I'm aiming for. Okay. Yes, you are alone. I think also the lone players, bar Bernardo, I think are all out of the Europa League squad because we just could not make room for them. We didn't have. Uh, I think we've got maybe one homegrown player who's actually in the uh, in the B team. So uh, this is. A Game for definitely a game for lone players to, to join in. What else have we got? And Fagan. You're another one, buddy. You can come in. Yeah, Piekowski could definitely get a game there. Okay, if we've got any defenders who can come and sit on the bench. Let's get Luis Yao up there. He is unhappy that he was not in the Europa League squad. And we've really had to scrimp on that. We've not got um, not got enough spaces for everyone in the squad. And that's something we will need to look to rectify going forward. Uh, but right now, there's not a huge amount I can do about it. There's not a great deal of talent coming through in the youth, youth squad either. So I think our strategy for the summer is to try and hold on to the better players. Uh, and start getting in some wonder kids. Uh, ideally some 18 year olds who can play second fiddle to, to the first team get a bit of game time and eventually become homegrown at club and give us a chance of filling a squad um, okay this i think is the team we're going to go with it's fairly strong let's hope we can do something Okay, give him a bit, bit of a pump up. Go on, lads, get out there and win. Okay, come on, football manager gods, be kind. I know we've not played the game for a little while, so please be nice. Please, please. It looks like Aberdeen won um, and Celtic also won. They still have that game in hand though. Uh, so we def definitely need to, to pick up some points here. We definitely need to, to get all three points. Uh, we've had 25 minutes of not very much, but we have the first highlight at last. Well, thanks very much for stopping by, Georgimus, and uh, well, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, so we're building from the back with our vertical tick attacker system before finding that perfect opportunity to strike and or just lump it into the corner and hope that Hibs mess up. And that's a fantastic piece of defending from Raskin. Threads it to, through to Colombo, who just can't do anything with it. And are we... Oh, is there a potential penalty? No penalty. Well... Is that the way our luck's going to go tonight? Let's hope not. 
Uh, we're building an attack there on the right this time with Samoise, who loses out to fantastically named Smallbone. But Hibs are wasteful when we come again. Are being a little wasteful ourselves here, just a little bit sloppy trying to move the ball forward. But we do look fairly solid when defending, so that's pleasing to see. We don't seem to be giving too much away at the moment. Big ball over the top for Colombo, who... Oh, he hits a screamer! But just ricochets off the post. So first we miss out on a penalty shout, and then we hit the post. Oh, it's got, what, it's got that feeling. We've got that FM feeling. Well, I think we can go attacking in the second half. We've very much dominated that game. Uh, let's have a look and see. Yeah, go on, let's go attacking. At least for the first 10 minutes and see if that changes anything. If we get too shaky at the back, I may switch it back to positive. But uh, a win's important, I think. We do need to go out there and get the points. Oh, and I don't like the fact that the first highlight was four Hibs. It was a set piece, though, so we won't read too much into it just yet. And I'm beginning to worry we've pushed our luck. We're going to go positive. We don't... It's not make or break just yet, but I don't want to be three points, potentially even five points behind Celtic if they win their game in hand. Okay, time for some changes. We're not quite getting the, the cut through that we need, so we'll get Mackenzie Cass on. Uh, Fagan's not really done much, so we'll get Isaacson to come on in his place, and Colombo can sit the rest of this game out for Tyrese Campbell. Anxiety from Gustafsson there, uh, Isaacson, sorry, doesn't make me uh, too happy. I'm going to break them now because we are actually getting worse. We've had very little to say in this second half, whereas Hibs seem to have done all the running. So let's get a second man up front, I think. Let's get Musa working upside alongside Tyrese Campbell. Uh, what I'll do is a complete forward and let's get... This man out here, you left footed. Yep, okay, so you can stay wide. You can get attacking. Uh, let's get you attacking out there. And let's see if that does anything. Ooh, that very attacking. Who does that? That's crazy. Okay. Um, we need something different, don't we? Not really got many game changers on the bench here. Let's get Mickle Mickelson on. He occasionally pops up with a goal from a from a set piece. Let's see if he can do something for us here. No, well that's a disappointing start to the night. Nil nil. Um, we had the better of the first half. Second half, however, we just threw it away. Hibbs had the better of the chances in the second half I had the only real chances and I feel like we've just slipped a little bit too much there but it's not over yet someone's going to have to tell me how VAR helped me there by not giving me a penalty but there you go that's, that's the press conference AI for you so, good evening. Hope you're doing well. Uh, if you're uh, popping in for the first time, please do take a look at the pinned message. Give you a bit of up, a bit of background to the save where uh, we started out our career in Sweden, and we are at Rangers today. The aim of the save is just to see how many trophies we can win. Um, 
and eventually hope we can land a big job at a Italian or Spanish or German club, Bayern, Real, Barcelona, that sort of thing. Potentially, if one of the truly big English club clubs come in for me, well, we may give that a crack. But I often play in England, so it's quite nice to do something a little bit different. Okay, it's coming up, we do have this second leg against Atalanta, and it's interesting. Interesting. We are Atalanta are slight favourites, which is unexpected, but the fans think we will come out on top. So it's intriguing. Uh, certainly more confidence in in my team than I've got. So maybe I'm just misreading the situation. But I do think that. In all, in all honesty, Atalanta are a slightly bigger club, at least in terms of reputation in, in Football Manager. So, obviously, we've been doing something right recently for them to think we are the favourites for this one. Perhaps it's the one goal lead. Um, not entirely sure how the AI works for that, but let's see. Yeah, uh, we're just going to say yes to everything. Always that second option. But someday I will build up the courage to give it all over to my assistant let him do the press conferences uh, so if you do know uh, whether that can genuinely impact on your game or not let me know Also gone for a bit of a mix with the background music tonight. Let me know what you think of that. Quite happy to take requests to, to a point. Okay, it is game night. When did, when did the Europa League games become 5.45? That's a monstrous time to play football. Certainly not one for the fans, is it? Okay, let's get Shackleton back in. And we will go with Sorensen and Piotrkowski. And I've just remembered I completely forgot to rest players. So we're just going to have to go with whoever I've got. It's a small squad for this Europa League. Uh, most of the time we do end up having to play... Uh, or at least put some B-team players on the bench just because they're young enough to, to get into the squad without having to register them. So we have to go with what's available to us. We'll just pick the best team that is available and hope that most of them can see it through to the end. Let's go Isaacson and Sarmiento on this one, I think. Colombo is very much our main option in attack. He's been a bit hit and miss, although in the last stream he did start scoring goals again, which was uh, very much a blessing. Okay, so as you can see, we've got still four spots unfilled, so just in case we will find some youngsters with just a bit of potential, really. One and a half stars is pretty much enough to get you onto my bench. That's that's where we're at at the moment. That's something we'll probably have to try and rectify over the next couple of years and start to develop some younger players so that they can come and uh, do a job for us and start to boost our squad size in Europa League. Although eventually I want that to be Champions League. Let's do that and we'll have Callum Stewart. Here we go, that'll do. Let's get that filter off. So, how's your evening going so far? Start of the week for some. Hope you had a good bank holiday weekend. Uh, now, I think my son has gone to bed. I will talk a little bit more about Sunday night. Uh, so, I had the, the great pleasure of attending the Gillingham Football Club end of season awards dinner, uh, which was a fantastic experience. It's not something I've done before, and I know it's one that the club hasn't been able to do for a few years due to COVID. So it was lovely to be able to, to get down there, uh, speak with a number of players, um, 
<clears throat> and um, meet some of the some of the staff and, and a number of other fans and people who I recognise from various match day blogs and uh, vlogs and so on. It was absolutely fantastic. Really, really good night. Uh, I was sat next to Aidan O'Brien. So those of you of Millwall bent will recognise that name, I'm sure. Um, and he. All I can say is the man's an absolute gent. Uh, we also had Scott Cashkit on our table, uh, so former Wickham player and current Gillingham player, uh, both of whom actually have been out injured, Scott and Aidan. Uh, so it was interesting to, to chat to them about their recovery um, and you know, so what their, their hopes are for the future. It was uh, yeah, just a general all-round good night. Uh, the food was pretty good. The uh, drink was even better, and. <coughs> I had, I did certainly had a few beers, uh, as as we all did, but uh, I think the players probably <laughs> enjoyed them even more. From what I understand, they were on it for most of the day, so a good night for them, I'm sure. Okay, we are here in this second leg against Atalanta in Italy. Let's hope we can do something, something to get ourselves through a quarter final would be uh, pretty special unexpected not something i was i was uh, necessarily looking for this season but we've given, us, given ourselves a good chance with that first leg and we are on the attack we've got sarmiento in the box pulls it back for isaacson and colombo he pounces on the deflection there and there's not even a sniff of offside we're one nil up we're two nil up on aggregate and we absolutely carved through them there far too easily from an At Atalanta point of view but Colombo the reflexes the reaction time there was incredible for us 1-0 it is quite happy seeing that clock tick over now Atalanta coming at us hard and that was close to the penalties oh well never mind no worries about the penalty that was a far too easy a goal we've just left Edison unmarked in the centre there and it's one all our advantage is halved seems like quite a tight game so far not a huge amount of chances for either side as Atlanta build from the back we're sitting very deep despite having a, a positive mentality and Thierry Small is going to get himself in serious trouble he's missed two tackles he's given away two easy crosses and we are now 2-1 down well, we are going to encourage the team to try and do better but this is the problem with that injury with uh, losing Yilmaz we Thierry Small can do a job but apparently not on the big stage And give them a bit of berating they didn't like that but I don't care they are throwing this away uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. No, let's tell them we're disappointed we need better and I mean it's our defence isn't it you boys need to pull your socks up can we go and snatch the goal that we desperately need here to get through to the quarter final and Atalanta look like they could have a break. We've got men flooding back, but they still have hold of the ball. And as it becomes man for man marking at the back, I get more nervous. Sorensen with a good intervention there. And Yates helps to clean up. And now we can push forward ourselves. Sarmiento with the ball for Colombo. Sarmiento picks up the ball after the tackle. And, oh, that's agonisingly wide. That is close. Still very little in this game, um, but we've conceded two goals from two shots on target from Atalanta. Uh, and Thierry Small, you have to say, was probably at fault for both of those, allowing the cross to come in far too easily uh, by letting himself jump into a couple of rash challenges. And Thierry Small does look tired there. I don't know if I've got anyone who's... Might, actually, Sorensen, I think, can play at left-back, so we may have to move things around there. We're, well, we've got Sarmiento forward, and that's a cracking goal. Brilliant play. Pass that around Atalanta quite impressively. I do think this tick attacker is paying off. 
So Samian, I mean, that's lovely little pass there, Colombo and Samian. So that, that inside forward run just doing the trick. Okay, let's make a couple of changes. I think Small does need to come off because he's something of a liability so far. Um, we've got some tired legs here, so Isaacson can come off for Therese Campbell. I think is left-footed, and so yet yeah, can play the inverted winger role. Let's also get Samienzo off. He's had a good game, but he is tired. And we'll get Raskin off for Mackenzie Cast there. Four changes, but we do need to freshen up the team. I didn't rest any players between the last game and this one, so there are going to be some tired legs, and we're going to have a few players who are really going to struggle towards the end of the game. So I feel like I might be holding on to that last sub just in case there's an injury. Atalanta are fairly soon going to start piling the pressure on, I'm sure. So I think we'll wait until the end of this highlight, perhaps, and then put some time wasting on. But I feel like we've just given them a goal here. That's poor. That is poor. Once again, Shackleton throwing himself into a challenge unnecessarily there. And as a result, we've given an easy cross to a not entirely unmarked player in the box there. But he just got ahead of our defender and has taken the chance pretty well. Piotrkowski doesn't seem to be enjoying himself at centre-back either, does he? don't think I've got any options at centre-back. And Smice has just not had a great game. He's been nowhere near any of it. Phil Welsh is a youngster who is a desperation sub. I don't think we're desperate. I'm going to bring off Shackleton for Samoise. And see if he can give us a bit of attacking impetus down the right. And just a bit of, uh, a, bit of a cool head uh, when, it, when defending. Shackleton and Thierry Small certainly have not shown that. Barrow with a good interception over on the left. Space in the middle here for Bernardo and Tyrese Campbell drops for that. Plays it out to Shackleton who breaks into the box and shoots wildly over. Time to get him off. Oh, we've lost the ball in at Atalanta's half here. Thankfully, Samoas has the energy to try and get back and defend. Is that a nameless ball forward? That's a poor header from Piatkowski. And goalkeeper makes a good intervention. Stop that cross getting over to their striker. Well, it's another one where I feel like we've had the better of the game. But are we going to be punished for... Shoddy defending. Shoddy is the only word I can come up with. It's been incredibly poor. But we do have an opportunity on the break here now. Bernardo Barrow. Can he find the ball for Campbell? And that's an incredible finish. But I see a, a linesman's flag up there. And I don't think it was even that close really, was it? That was almost certainly a comfortable decision. Yeah, Campbell just doesn't hold his run. And wastes an opportunity He's fast enough that he doesn't need to break forward like that. Ashwin, how are you doing? Didn't didn't catch your stream today, but I hope it went well for you. Um, I've not even seen the Chelsea score. How is that? How's that going? Let's have a look. Come on, Sky Sports, do me well. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right, we're into extra time here at Atalanta. I've just seen the Arsenal score as well, and that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, I have a friend who's an Arsenal season ticket holder, and he's, he messaged me before the game to say... Uh, Chelsea fans or couldn't understand why they were being quite so um, loud about how Arsenal were getting on, considering 
uh, their position and I'm sure he's incredibly happy right now to see them failing the way they are and it's almost Spurs level of failure isn't it okay what have we got do we have anything we can do here Colombo do I go for a striker do I try and freshen up that midfield okay do you know what it's it's all about the goals let's see if we can go and steal a goal you a left footer as well yeah okay let's see what we can do <laughs> Chelsea being relegated would give me an endless amount of pleasure it really really would and I'm sorry for any Chelsea fans out there but I think seeing any big team go down is something that especially us uh, us fans at small clubs we're never going to see trophies not big trophies so we take our pleasure in watching the big boys fall I'd be quite happy to see Everton go down as well just because they've this sort of club that's been up there for so long it would be incredible and we've just come so close there i think all of the all of the stats show that this has been our game and we just need to go and do it we have found ourselves a little bit exposed here at the back and the goalkeeper's just gone for a wonder smice is really testing my patience at the moment oh my goodness Can we do it? I mean, that's a great ball over the top. Tyrese Campbell, this would be a great time for you to score. Oh, that's what I wanted to see. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Right, we're going, we're going to waste time. We are just going to stop. Just just stop the game. Just ruin, it, ruin everything. Well, I don't quite know how we've done it. Well, I do know how we've done it. We were the better team. We should have had that finished well well before extra time. But we are through to the quarter final of the Europa League. That's that's definitely uh, definitely far beyond my own expectations this season. That's cracking. So, who have we got in the quarter final? So we've still got a few games to be played, but we've got the likes of Club Rouge, Tottenham, Schalke, and potentially some big teams here, Everton, Bayer, Leverkusen, Salzburg, Sociedad, Napoli, Leicester. We're not going to get an easy tie in this quarterfinal at all. Just don't see how that would be possible. Wowzers. Well, that's gone better than I would I expected. Shame about the league game. Um, dropping points at this stage is... Uh, it's hard to make them up. We've only got eight games left and my league title hopes are slipping away. Okay, well, on to the former club then. Dundee United, our previous club, and, well, our employers up until December of this season are coming to Ibrox, and they're doing it twice in a week. We've got the uh, cup quarter final against them before we face them again in the league the following week. I'd like quite like to see the double over them, please. So 
So we're looking to do maybe a stream until about 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, I, do, I do work Monday to Friday, so my weekday streams are absolutely going to be shorter than my weekend streams. Quite happy to, to hang out with you till uh, the wee hours on a Friday or Saturday night, but unfortunately I've got to go and earn some money. Uh, Monday to Friday so can't quite bring myself to do that I do get up at 6 a.m. so getting going past 11 p.m. is probably a bit too much for me especially the, the ripe old age of 38 for a brief while particularly during covid and lockdowns I got into the habit of napping and that was a terrible thing I don't do it any anymore uh, nowhere near as much at least every now and then if I've been to the pub the night before, yeah, a quick half hour, shut eye at two o'clock is a wonderful thing. But my boss isn't too keen on me doing that during work hours. Okay. Let's get through the press conference and get on with Dundee United. So we're playing tomorrow. And the squad will be whoever is fit. <sighs> yeah, my, my bank holiday was absolutely amazing. Uh, I was saying earlier that uh, Sunday night was uh, Player of the Year, or End, end of Season Awards uh, event at Gillingham. And that was fantastic. It was, it was really, really nice. It was nice to see, um, you know, players and fans, club and fans back together like in the good old days uh, and I've, I've not attended one myself either so for me it was a quite a new experience but to see you know the players just mingling with with fans and uh, uh staff and yeah the manager happy to, to have a chat with anyone have a picture with anyone was absolutely fantastic and i think it's the sort of thing you don't really see at premier league clubs do you i feel free to, to come and tell me i'm wrong um but I, I don't know if that's something you'd you'd be able to afford if you if you're just a, a normal fan. The, the tickets for Gilling were uh, fairly reasonable. I'd say it was seventy two pounds. It included your your three course meal, um, entry into the event, and you had a player sat at your table with you. Which I mean, it's, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. I certainly felt like I got value for money in that one. All right, Sorensen looks a bit tired, so we're going to give Mickelson the start, and we'll have Chris Sostamu. Who's taller? My taller man. Yeah, you're going to be on the right then, because you can head the ball. Interesting, you're a centre-back over there. Let's change that so you can be a central defender there, if that's what you're more comfortable doing. So how's the stream going, Ashwin? I've, uh, like I say, I've genuinely not popped in. Not popped in at all today. I've been working and uh, then I've got the kids home from school. In fact, it's why I stream after 8 o'clock. It's once they've all gone to bed and they've all gone quiet that I can come and do this. Although there is every chance that at some point one child will pop up. I've had that. Well, not before I was streaming, uh, my daughter, when she was, what, four years old, suddenly appeared over my shoulder and scared the life out of me. As she just came and went, Dad. And, and I, I jumped out of my skin. My friends who I was playing with at the time thought it was hilarious. Right, we're going to have a real huge start again just because I'm running short of options here. I think that's an okay. I wonder actually whether a change to make for next season. I don't really have the squad to do it now, but a change potentially to make next season. Do I have the squad? What can you play as? The thing I'm thinking about is potentially moving the deep line playmaker back here into the defensive midfielder slot and then having a box to box midfielder and a Mazala to make that. that, that 
uh, central two, just a little, a little bit more attacking, just to get someone in behind the striker, someone who gets into the box. That might be one to consider. In fact, I might try that for the league game against Dundee. Just change things up a little bit. And Colombo can't do a full game. So, Torres Campbell can, after his winner, can definitely get a start. I feel like he's earned it. Okay, we can make a squad for this game, can't we? Yulmo's back in a couple of weeks, which will be good. Let's have Colombo on the bench because he's he is still a very good player. And even if he's a little bit tired, uh, if we're struggling for goals, he can come up on come on and help us, I think. Oh, almost the ideal start there. Raskin rattles the crossbar. And it looks like we've got a cold and wet one today. It is a cup game, so one goal will do. We don't need to dominate. We just need a goal and get out. Oh, and as I look, I see my, uh, my old wonder kid, Jose Aguila. Look at him developing, he's getting so good, bless him. We are building slowly from the back before, boom, ball forward. That's a good run, small now, back into Cars. Lovely ball for three for Sarmiento and Campbell finds great space, but it's a wild finish really. Given the position he was in, he should have done an awful lot better. Oh, it's a very good save. Cast with a good strike from inside the box. I'm looking for a league table that doesn't exist there. Good work from Sarmiento, and he can get free down this left-hand side. Can we get support into the box? I mean, it's cleared. It's almost crossed for us by the Dundee team. Fagan now bursts into the box, and that is almost a, an attempt at a finish. Oh, we just need to get that goal, gents. We certainly don't want to give away a goal here. And that's flown over the bar. Goalkeeper sees it over. No worries at all. Oh, Raskin steals the ball and he cracks it against the crossbar again. I think it was him who took the free kick earlier. We're knocking at the door. We are knocking. It would be nice to go in at half time one up just to capitalise on the dominance we've had so far. I'm playing a little bit risky there, but we do manage to keep hold of the ball. Chris Ostamu now out to Sam Was. And that's an incredibly deep line, deep line playmaker role that Chris Ostamu's playing. Small now breaks into the box. Can he apply the finish? And yes, he can. And we do get that lead just before the half-time whistle. 
Thierry Small, who what probably is the reason that our uh, tie against Atalanta went the distance, makes some amends by smashing the ball in at the near post there. And we are 1-0 up in this cup quarter-final tie. Let's see if we can do a bit better. So a couple of names already in the Dundee team that I or Dundee United, sorry, team that I don't recognise. Uh, there was a lad named Stephenson, uh, and this guy here, Gill, wasn't one of mine. The rest, I believe, were all players under me. Yeah, I don't think I signed many of them, other than, say, Otterson. Oh, I mean, we, we conceded two goals to Atalanta from that exact position. I don't understand how Campbell has missed what was a guilt edge chance there. I think he's going to be the first player I whip off. Uh, we'll get Colombo. Let's give, should we give Musa Barrow a run up there? I think he's fairly competent as a striker. So let's get him up there. And we are also going to get Samwas off for Shackleton. He's not had the greatest game. So and we do need to just freshen things up a little bit. Well, it looks like we are dominating at this stage. And a second goal would make me a much, much happier man. But I'm not going to complain too much. We're doing the business so far. Let's get Sorensen on for Small, who's exhausted. And Sarmiento can come off for Colombo. And we're going to get Colombo up front. Ten minutes left to go until we know whether. Oh, sorry, ten minutes left to go until we know whether we are in to the semi-final. One last change as legs start to tire, and that'll be Fagan off for Isaacson. Isaacson, who of course we spent twelve million pounds of in January, and hasn't quite had the impact I would hope for, but uh, does play a role. And. Despite absolutely hammering Dundee United, we've only won 1-0, but that's all we needed to do. I said that at the start of the game, you don't need to score more than one in a cup game, and that's what we've done. Uh, let's give them no gesture. We weren't at our best. We need to do better in the second leg. Second leg, second game. Uh, because that is in the league, and that one is important. Yeah, I have no ill will to halt towards Dundee United. They were just a stepping stone in my personal ambition, which is to get just as many trophies as possible. And Rangers certainly felt like a much easier opportunity to get those trophies than at Dundee United. I've no doubt if I'd spent a few years at Dundee United, we would be able to, to lift the Premiership uh, and eventually some European cups as well and in fact we did win our first domestic cup competition with Dundee United when we won the Scottish Cup last year beating Celtic in the final but I want league titles okay let's move on we have Hearts in the semi-final. So we're playing Hearts. It's Aberdeen or Liverpool against Celtic or St Mirror. St Mirren? Just call them St Mirror. That's clearly not their name. I wonder... I mean, it's likely to be Celtic, but Aberdeen are in good form in the league. So could be either of those, really. Either way, there are no easy games at this stage of a competition, even in Scotland. We're going to have to do our very best. I say there are no easy games. I think as Dundee United semi-final handed me Greenock Morton. Uh, and no offence to Greenock. But they are just not that strong. I think they're doing quite well in the championship. Or they were last season. Yeah, okay. They're not doing brilliantly. But even, even though they were really no match for my Dundee United side. Okay, so 
I think as I said, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to turn this into the deep lying playmaker role and I'm going to turn this into, I think, an attacking Mazala role for the next game. Because certainly Bernardo can play as Mazala, I think. And it'd be interesting to see how well he does getting more involved forward than sort of sitting back and trying to dictate from the middle of the pitch. Let's see if he's able to produce something going forward. And that gets me almost two players in behind the striker as we push forward. Gives me a front five. Uh, while we'll have this guy here. Probably won't be Will Hughes most of the time. Uh, but we'll have maybe Brian Yates or potentially even potentially even Mackenzie Cast try and dictate the play from back there. We've got a good uh, good marker now, so we know how that one ga game went. We dominated but just didn't put them to the sword quite. Second one, can we dominate but get those goals and you know will having a couple of players closer in behind the striker do that for us will that be what tips us from very good at controlling the game to actually winning comfortably i don't care about answering questions about international call-ups in fact i'd rather none of my players are called up to international games i'd rather they were having a rest uh, once a month that would be nice Okay, no, that's good, good, yep, three players left out, 14 players called up though, um, but only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, 8 of them are first teamers, okay, could be worse, we could have 15 players being called up. So, this is fairly big for us. We're absolutely going to make it into the championship phase. I don't think there's any doubt about that at all. It's just how close can we be when those last five games are set up. I would quite like to be a point or no more behind Celtic. Ideally above them, obviously, but I don't think it's realistic they're going to drop that many points in the next three games. But if we can be within three points of them going into our game against Celtic, it gives us a chance. I mean, their goal difference is huge compared to ours, but it gives us a chance. All it would take is for them to drop a couple of points in another game, and suddenly we are on top. The board want me to finish second, and I think we are predicted to finish second. It's fairly close. I mean, I say it's fairly close. It just we're obviously way ahead of the rest of the league in terms of squad depth. When we did pick up Rangers, we were fourth and a good few points behind Hibs, Aberdeen, and Celtic. So we have managed to close the gap a bit, but um, it doesn't help that my first two games in charge were losses to Aberdeen and Celtic, giving them a chance to stretch away from us. Uh, but since then, our form has been fairly good. We did just drop a point at Hibs, a couple of points at Hibs. But it's not the end of the world. I clearly need to set up that chat command. <laughs> if I can work out raids and you're still on, I will certainly look to, to raid over to you later on. Did I see you on at some mad hour, like 6am UK time today? 
I'm sure when I got up, I, I saw a notification to say you'd been streaming or started a stream. Yeah, Terry Small will play only because I don't have any options at left back. Well, your man's six days away, so he'll be back in time for the games that will come after the international break, but he's still going to have to play the next one. Hopefully, he can score another goal. Oh, here we go. European draw time. So, got some fairly decent teams still. I say fairly decent. We've got some big teams in there. Tottenham, Everton, Leicester. I mean, it's a lot of English teams in there still who are likely, I think, to be in the semi-final. Uh, Schalke, Real Sociedad, Bruges, Bayer Leverkusen. I mean, all on and above our level. So, this could be tricky, whoever we end up with. We've avoided one of the English clubs. We've avoided two of the English clubs. We've avoided all three English clubs. And we are going to have our quarter-final tie against Schalke. I mean, that's going to be an interesting one. So, relative levels. I mean, Schalke have struggled in real life, haven't they? We are six years into the future. Seven years into the future now, I think. So, things may well have changed. But I'm quietly confident we can do something in this one. Uh, now we've got the semi-final draw. I don't know how much we need to pay attention to this one. I don't know if we're likely to be in this one. But if we do, it's Bruges or Tottenham for us. I mean, I do feel like Tottenham should make their way through that round fairly comfortably. So I hope everyone, everyone's having a lovely Tuesday evening so far. And I hope you've had a great weekend. Uh, do tell me if you had any uh, anything good over, uh, did anything good over the bank holiday weekend or did nothing good at all. Perhaps you've got a good football manager sh story to share. But do feel free to jump into the chat and say hello. If you feel like being, being a lurker though, feel free to do that as well. I'll just waffle on until someone interrupts me. Okay, we are going to clear this squad and we're going to build from uh, scratch. I do want Shackleton in there and I think now that Sorensen's had a chance to rest, we'll do this. Do you have a side preference you do prefer to be on the left? That's good. Five days. Go on, small. You scored in the last one. You made amends for Atalanta. I'll give you another chance. Now, this is the one. Who is our deep-lying playmaker? Raskin can do that role, but I like him in the box-to-box -box role as well. How does Yates feel about being a defensive-lying playmaker? He's got some passing ability. Visions. Okay. He'd prefer to be a ball-winning midfielder, but I don't want to play that role. Piatkowski, yeah, similar sort of player, really. Big and tough. Mackenzie Cars, what do you like? Okay, you like to play the ball a bit more. Let's give Cars a start. It does mean dropping Yates to the bench, but uh, as it's something of an experiment, this one, we'll see how it goes. Bernardo does like being a deep lying playmaker. But I want to see if I can get him involved more at the top end of the pitch. Uh, and then Fagan and Sarmiento clearly going to be our two choices on the wing. And Colombo. So, 
strongest team available going out for this one. The last game before the international break and uh, as far as I'm concerned one that we desperately need to win as we attempt to keep in touch at the top. Right, Yates and... Yeah, that'll do. And go with an attacking bench. How are Arsenal getting on? So it is well, still 3 0. Apparently, Chelsea have managed to stop the rot. But it is, well, it's a terrible season for them. You have to wonder, are they, st I mean, it's still mathematically in with a chance of going down it feels like a very unlikely a series of events that would lead to them actually being relegated but we're still in a situation where we could see Leicester, Chelsea and Everton all go down and that's just that's just incredible isn't it although I say that I'm not entirely sure that Southampton can catch anyone now can they they can catch someone but could they end catch enough for all three other teams to go down. Probably not. Probably not. Okay, so I've got a slightly different setup for this game. Uh, effectively, just a more attacking midfield two uh, with the defensive midfielder trying to dictate the game from deep. We were absolutely dominant in the first game um, at home in the quarter-final of the Cup. But we just weren't scoring the goals. My hope here is that we get a bit more support forward for the strikers and actually take advantage and create slightly, um, slightly better chances. Well, Sarmiento just... Pickpockets McLennan there, and we're one nil up. Probably not quite what I was going for, um, but interestingly, we did have three players very close here: um, Colombo, Bernardo, and this is the one. Bernardo would often be sat back here playing the deep line playmaker role, a lot further forward. And while it might potentially look as if they got in each other's way, they split nicely to drag defenders all out of position. I'm encouraged. I am encouraged by that one. Still masses of possession, getting shots away. More on target, which is a good thing. And well, that's, this first half looks like it's going to peter out, although we do now have uh, a Dundee United highlight, although that's crunching tackle in there. Fagan now charging into the box and another poor finish. I was hoping he'd, uh, he'd get more assists and goals than he has so far. I was ready to, to throw pretty much everything I've got from my uh, summer transfer budget at him but it's looking less likely okay we start quickly in this first in the second half sorry with a corner and that's that's an incredible header that's what you want from your centre backs that's what they're doing up there for corners just simple bang Sarmiento, near post, Sorensen, header, goal, 2-0, and we are very happy with that. When did Shackleton get injured? We might just need to get him off pretty sharpish. He is, of course, another midfield option, as well as being... Um, Pretty much first choice right back for me so far, but he could well do the box to box midfield role um, in place of Raskin, who could do the deep line playmaker role. So he gives me more options in the centre as well. 
So let's keep him fit if we can. And that was a very tame end to that highlight. Let's get Shackleton off and we'll get Samoise on. I say it was a tame end. It hasn't finished. And Lumeka now has gone through to score far too easily. We'll take a look at that replay just to see if I can blame my midfield tactic for that at all. But I don't think so because it's just entirely bypassed the midfield. Chris Hostam who just gets drawn out there. Lumeka gets in behind. Don't think I can blame my midfielders for that one. And we are going to demand more because I don't think a one goal lead is quite enough. Well, that's very good work down the right there. Samoise, are we going to... Okay, ref is going to have a little uh, poke around in his ear, uh, listening to the voice inside his head. And the voice inside his head tells him to go and have a look at the TV screen. And the TV screen tells him it was a penalty. Come on. No penalty. Well... I mean, we should still be attacking then. Why can't you wait until later to have a look at that? Look afterwards. Let it play out. No. All of our attacking momentum is now gone. Okay, let's make a couple more changes. Small is letting the side down once again. So we'll get Mickelson. Mickle Mickelson on. So good they named him twice. Um, and... Cars can come and sit one out and we'll get Ryan Yates on. Let's see how he does in that role. Got more defensive metal about him, but as a playmaker, I'm, I'm not convinced. Oh, and that's a fantastic header, but the linesman's flag is up. I'm not sure we saw Colombo in, uh, in the first shot there from the free kick. And yep, he was offside. Yeah, and comfortably so. Why are you aiming at that man when he's that far offside? That's disappointing, that. Okay, let's make some tired leg changes. I think Chris Ostomo is putting a, put, put in a shift there. And we've missed a goal. And is it Chris Ostomo? <laughs> it is... Oh, um, well, thank you for your service, but come and have a rest. And it's another near post corner, just simple. We are at least, in, at least scoring goals from set pieces, which is something I've struggled with, actually, in uh, some of my teams in this save so far. And that's a very good tackle from Yates and, and like I say he's defensively more solid than Mackenzie Cass and might be the right way to go in that deep line playmaker role because he's not horrendous on the ball either and that's lovely football involving Ryan Yates started with the move from him a good ball for ball forward for Bernardo and then Bernardo just slots it through and that's the advantage of getting Bernardo involved further forward in the play Raskin to Yates to Bernardo and then uh, just takes it to the side to create some space and an angle and Colombo goes in and finishes off the job. And it's one game but so far it looks to be pointing towards a positive view of that change in the central midfield. I'm certainly much happier with it. And that's five. And that is five. And I said the whole point was I wanted to get more goals. The whole point of that change in tactic was I wanted to get more goals. We've gone from a 1-0 win with the old midfield trio set up. Five in this one. And I can't help but feel just having the extra body in the box going forward is splitting defences a bit more and making for easier chances. Well, we're not going to base everything just off of a one-game experiment, but I'm very, very happy with what I've seen, and I think we will persist with that one going into the next game.
So what has that done to the league? Well, we're still in fourth. We're still one point behind, so nothing nothing has changed yet. Celtic do have a game in hand again, and they're playing Ross County, I presume, tomorrow, and would fully expect them to win that. So no change at all. Okay, Shackleton is out, which is a shame. But I do think they have adequate replacement at right back in Sam Wars. So this is part of the problem with me doing the press conferences, it seems. I've effectively just said, yeah, sure, I might consider selling one of my players. Uh, when in truth, I've no intention of doing so. Maybe I do need to hand this over to the assistant manager. perhaps should have just said nothing I didn't really read the question I just went for that second option which is usually a fairly safe one upsets no apples but in this case I've basically said yeah I wouldn't mind listening to selling my players and actually I think Raskin's one of my better ones and he's done a you know good job for me in midfield there hmm I mean, that is your best role, defensive, deep playing playmaker. Box to box actually isn't much of a favourite of yours. Hmm. Thoughts. How would you play? Bernardo is the Mazzala, Rasking as the defensive midfielder, and then what? Yates potentially as a box to box midfielder. That might be the way around to play them. He's got the stamina. You can get up and down the pitch, he's brave. Okay, that's, that might be one that we try for the next game then. So, pretty much the same middle three with uh, Yates, Raskin and Bernardo, but just in a slightly different com configuration, having Raskin as the deep-lying playmaker, and then Yates doing all the running up and down. I said he's more defensively solid, but if he can run up and down and, and do a job at both ends, well, let's have a look at that, let's explore. Oh no, one of my players has been given an international ban, meaning he won't be able to play a game. Sharks. That means a few days rest. Back nice and fit for us. So, before the split, we've got just 
two more Premiership games. Home to St Johnson, but the big one away to Aberdeen. If we can win that one, I think we put ourselves into pole position for second place. Celtic did indeed win their game against Ross County to nobody's surprise. Uh, so it's all about that championship phase. It's going to be the head-to-head -head games that matter. So we have um, well, pretty much six cup finals, including our game against Aberdeen. St Johnston should be a relatively easy win. And they are ninth and... Really just battling to, to stay out of relegation. That's a huge gap, isn't it? Between 8th and 9th. That's incredible. But yes, we are looking to win that one easily. And then six cup finals. Uh, I think Dundee United, we've got the better of. Hearts, we've easily got the better of. But we've got three teams pretty much on our level. Uh, I have played Celtic and Aberdeen already. Uh, since joining as Rangers manager. And we lost both of them. So a chance now to get a bit of revenge against Aberdeen. But also just to try and set ourselves up for a title charge. Where we've got five big games. Um, likely against one of uh, Dundee United, St Mirren and Dundee. Uh, and then games against Celtic Aberdeen, Hibs and Hearts. Which are going to seal our fate this season. Thankfully for me, the board are only expecting Champions League football, so second place would be good enough. But I want a title. So how is your evening going so far? How uh, How is your bank holiday weekend? I've got another one to look forward to. Are you going to watch the coronation? Um, I can answer that one for you. I'm not. I will be looking to just find something better to do with my time. But there'll be plenty, out of, plenty of people out there who do enjoy this sort of thing. So what are you doing for that? Have you got an event? I know there's lots, lots of... Uh, Street parties meant to be going on and so on. So are you going to take part in one of those? Come and let me know. Come on, let's get through all of these. They can do that as an email going forward, I think. <coughs> do you know how you get things... You have you have things set up in a certain way and it just becomes habit. I do a monthly staff meeting and yet all I do is click through them as quickly as possible. I've found next to no useful information in those. And more often than not, if you follow all of their um, recommendations, you just end up making half your team happy because you've dropped their playing time. Um, or you've transfer listed them for no reason. So yeah, Gareth Fagan, he was one that I was very excited to bring in uh, in January. He thought he was um, his transfer listed for £46 million, pounds, which is well beyond what I'm able to do. But I was hoping in the summer I might be able to structure a deal, um, <clears throat> depending on what my transfer budget ends up being, but structure a deal that brings him to Ibrox on a permanent basis. But so far... 
I can't say I've seen that much from him. And perhaps I'm being just a little bit unkind, but we've seen, I think we saw a goal, didn't we, uh, from him in the cup. Where did, yeah, so against Arbroath, which um, I don't think is much to be too excited about. And then an assist possibly also in the cup. I oh, know we've not seen an assist from from him at all yet. So, um, yeah, not quite having the impact that I was hoping for so far. But we'll see how he works out for the rest of the season. But it might be that I switch targets to someone else. I do think my... <coughs> Um, my transfer policy for the summer is youngsters, uh, and I mean 18-year-olds, because we need to start building a future squad that is able to compete in Europe uh, with a full squad. So far for the Europa League, I think we had one homegrown player that we could register. Um, yeah, Alex Lowry here, who uh, really is is a B-team player. He's just there to make up numbers at the moment. And then we've got a third choice goalkeeper. And Mackenzie Cast was actually on loan from Fulham. So we don't have any kind of homegrown talent at all. And looking at the development centre, there's not a huge amount coming through in the squad. So that's got to be Summer's uh, priority. It's got to be Summer's priority. We've got to start getting some youngsters in who will eventually take the club forward, be better than the current crop of players that we have and also will be the sort of players that we build the team around. Really disappointing. Seven to nine weeks. That's the end of his season. He was really showing himself to be quite the talent. That is a shame. Well, we will manage. We've got we do have Mikkel Mickelson who I'd pretty much taken out for Chris Ostamu. I just wanted someone who I think it was a deadline day signing really, so it cost me absolutely nothing. That's not true at all, it cost me fifteen grand a week. Um but no kind of fee and did helped solidify our defence quite significantly. Oh, that's interesting. Are the stats showing here from Man United? Because it shows here no appearances in the league, but yet here he absolutely did. Interesting. Bit of a glitch there, I think. Anyhow, on to the press conference I would love to bring him in permanently but that's a big big transfer fee And yeah, there's me talking about Aberdeen, but we've got the visit of Schalke first. And that feels unfair. That feels unfair. How are we going Thursday, Saturday? Surely that game should be rearranged. And given the given how huge that game is, that feels quite unfair. Well, I'm grumpy about that now. It's one of those kinks. They've never quite managed to get out of um, Football Manager, is it? When it comes to 
Uh, when it comes to scheduling problems, you always find something like this just pops up every now and then. I mean, I've, I've seen, you know, play, uh, seen teams having to play Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, which is just incredibly it's, it's just stupid, isn't it? It's ridiculous that teams have to do that. But then it is just a game, isn't it? If that was a human being looking at that, you would probably change that, wouldn't you? Right, well... Definitely need to make sure I rest players, even if it's just for one day after the Schalke game, I think. I know what training would we have? Recovery travel, match preview, I don't think there's a rest in there. We're just going to have to hope that we can... What do I do? What do I do? Do I sacrifice that home game against Schalke and put some second stringers in? If Gareth Fagan certainly won't be able to play, and neither will Cross. I mean, Chris Ostermann who's injured, but he wouldn't have been able to play in the European game anyway. So that would have been two changes made for me. But it's the likes of Colombo, it's the likes of Bernardo. Do I rest them for Schalke and make sure they are able to play against Aberdeen? Or do I try to focus on Schalke? But then I've don't know how realistic a Europa League win is. Let's let's worry about that when we get there. Who knows what the situation will be? We've got a few injuries now, so who knows what that will look like by the time Saturday rolls around? Okay, let's get Samwise on. We'll have Mikkel Mickelson. So Piatkowski, can you play there? You can, and you're quite good at it. Okay, let's go for the grown-up. Let's go for Piet Kowski there. We'll have Sorensen on the left side. And Yilmaz is fit to play. Let's get him back into the team straight away, shall we? Right, we said we're going to go with Raskin as our deep-lying defensive uh, deep -lying playmaker on defence. And apologies for the sirens just here going past. Uh, and then we'll get... Yates as our box-to-box -box midfielder and Bernardo as our Mazzala. So if we change your training setup, yeah, we want you getting forward. Okay, and then on the right we will have Tyrese Campbell. You can play as an inverted winger there. Sarmiento, Colombo up front. Simples. Right, let's get into the match. So, how did Arsenal get on in the end? Is it still going? 3-1 oh, Chelsea did manage to grab one back, but I know they lost that game in the first 20 minutes, didn't they? which, uh, according to my friend who's the Arsenal season ticket holder, uh, they were all very... The Chelsea fans are all very loud about Arsenal throwing the league away, uh, which is uh, quite a funny thing, as Chelsea threw the league away pretty much at the start of the season. Um, but, I mean, at one point you did wonder whether Chelsea were throwing their Premier League status away. Uh, but it looks like they've had a bit of a humbling at the Emirates. Right, let's go and do a job against St Johnston. And Celtic now seven points clear of us. It really makes that that title chance feel not quite impossible, but getting close. We're asking a lot for Celtic to give up points, and a lot of them. We can be responsible for three, but... 
there's an awful lot more that we can't really, well, we don't have any hand in at all. That's a lovely ball forward for Bernardo, and this is why I like him being forward. That's incredible. What a good run. And that's the sort of run we weren't getting from midfielders with the previous setup. Box box midfielder, deep, deep lying playmaker on support in the middle of the park just wasn't giving us that impetus and that oomph going forward. So, at the moment, I'm chalking that one up as a good change. Well, Hibbs and Aberdeen are playing each other, so there is. It, well, we are absolutely going to have to go above at least one of them. If it stays as a draw, we go above both and we become the closest challengers to Celtic. Uh, Hibs, however, have just gone ahead in their game at home. Building nicely here again. And are you? Oh, is that Bernardo? There it is. Yeah, so he was getting into the box alongside Colombo, which we weren't seeing previously. This, I think, this has been exactly the change we needed. And we've got the penalty. All right, let's convert this. Let's do a professional job here. Goal number two. Well done, that man. And goal number 32 of the season for Colombo. And I think at the start of my uh, Rangers career, I wasn't convinced by him. He'd already scored 20, uh, 20 goals by the time I joined Rangers at the end of December. But he just went through a whole period where he just didn't score. And I was beginning to get a little bit frustrated and was potentially looking at options and I do think we could probably do with someone who can um, rotate, in, rotate into the uh, starting 11 when he is struggling for form but actually my judgment was pretty poor there and I think Banks is being sent off yeah Scott Banks sent off for St Johnston and quite rightly so after that horrendous challenge well deserved red card And this is a chance really for us to, I think we just need to be ruthless. Let's uh, go attacking and we'll finish the first half attacking. We'll start the second half attacking and see if we can rack up a few more goals. Something good for our morale. And goal difference is fairly tight amongst some of us, so all goes to help that as well. You can see actually uh, negative compared to Hibs and Aberdeen, so it's important for us to go out and get some goals. So let's see if we can do that. Right, Sarmiento's not really producing much, so he can come off. And let's get Musa Barrow on. Raskin's done just fine. Samoas doesn't really have a replacement in the squad. And that's another goal. I've missed another goal making changes. Well... That'll teach me. Let's get Mickle Mickelson on. And we'll do that. So who was this? So Yilmaz down the left. Bernardo getting forward again and Colombo. Well I don't think I need to I don't think I need to, to even talk about that change anymore. It is now a permanent change. It's come into great effect in the last two games uh, and we will be persisting with that. Right, Piet Kowski, now just out uh, right back as I've taken off Sam Was to get Mikkel Mickelson on. Lovely turn from Barrow, and that is for a hint of offside potentially. Nope. No, the ref's not even looking at it. It's lovely, turns the defender there. Sensibly puts it across the box and 
I'm convinced Colombo's offside, and how that's not interfering with play is beyond me. He pretty much, well, I didn't touch it, I suppose, but I won't, I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, let's make another couple of changes. Fagan's tired, so we're going to keep him off. I'm going to, let's get Isaacson on. And we shall also, let's get, so should we get Cozier Dupree on? I think we'll hold fire on that and see who gets tired. <clears throat> Ideally I want uh, Colombo to get on his hat trick and then I can bring on Cozier Dubry and uh, make a couple of changes up top, move things around a little bit. Now, Isaacson did have a good game up top. I think he scored um, scored a goal in a, a cameo as a striker. It might well be that somewhere we uh, consider putting him. Potentially, he is that backup option up front. <clears throat> I have mostly considered him to be a winger, but perhaps I'm selling him short. Okay. Um, Colombo so shows no sign of tiring and also no sign of scoring that second goal so we are going to get him off anyway just to get some minutes into Cozy Dubry before he gets unhappy and then Sorensen is starting to tire a little bit so we'll get Louisiao on Louisiao yeah Louisiao isn't it And then we'll wrap this one up quite comfortably. 4 0 so far. Do we make it 5 here? Come on, lads. Cricket score, please. Oh, that's a lovely drive into the box. Now. I don't see how this can potentially... Uh, how can you give this as a penalty? It was clearly, clearly tackled. Balls moved the other direction, yeah. But somehow, we've just lost all of the attacking impetus. He could have continued, won that ball, and we could have had a chance. But referee's blown his whistle for nothing. Hey-ho, 4-0. Helps with the goal difference a little bit. Gets us up to third. Although I didn't catch what the final result was at Hibs. So maybe second. No. Oh, Aberdeen won that game in the end. So they completed the comeback. We are one point behind Aberdeen. Who we play next in the league. Um, although we do have the Schalke game first. And we're five points behind Celtic. So... While the title chances aren't entirely gone, we're asking Celtic to lose two of the last six games, which feels fairly unlikely. Right, we are going to take a quick break here. Uh, we do have another hour or so left, so we're just going to break for five minutes. Uh, see you shortly.
and we are back I hope I've uh, not been gone too long let's give a bit of praise out goals are good oh well I do I do like this Rangers enjoying life with Theobald 15 victories in 20 games oh, maybe I'm quite good at this after all Losing money a little bit here, that's concerning. It's not that concerning. It's not my job to look after the money, it's my job to look after the football. And Colombo gets a Player of the Award a month. Or Player of the Month Award, rather. Come on, Adam, it's English, you can do this. Quarter final of the Europa League. Well, wasn't really expecting to be here so i think i think i've made up my mind that i'm going to um i'm going to sacrifice this one gotta put everything into the aberdeen game gotta give myself the best chance possible of making the champions league next season if nothing else so we're going to put Slightly weakened squad out, although we don't have many options in the Europa League. A slightly smaller squad of what 20, I think it's 20, might yeah, 20 because we've only got three players homegrown in the country in our squad. Um, so I may not be able to make too many changes at all, but if I can, I want to at least be able to rest. Colombo and Bernardo because I think they're irreplaceable. And I think they'll be very important against Aberdeen, those two players in particular. So that's interesting, I've been drawing an opponent quite similar to yourselves. Oh, see, look, they're trying to suck me in. Telling me I've got a chance to win this. 11th in the Bundesliga. 11 wins, 11 losses. Oh. Oh, no. Ashwin, mate. <laughs> oh. I've not yet had that. Not yet. I've I've had uh, one broken stream already. Um, I don't know how long it was before I noticed it had crashed, but uh, probably no more than about five minutes or so. You've you've been streaming a lot today, haven't you? I'm sure I saw a notification at six a.m. Yeah, I've seen a few streamers who use OBS, and um, it's normally OBS that crashes for reasons just just obs reasons but it's free i'm not going to complain too much about it it's done all okay for me so far do you have do you have a schedule for your streams or is it just as the mood takes you for me i've, I've struggled to, to set that uh schedule for myself it's hard, you know, I've got three kids, I've got stuff going on all over the place. It's uh, all very irregular. And I've got, you know, my season ticket. So Tuesday nights can quite often be out of the equation. Saturdays, pretty much a no-go. Yeah, it's a sensible idea. And he's starting at 3 o'clock until... What is it there? 11? 
I'm not sure with the British summertime what that does to our time difference, but that's that's, that's stamina. That is stamina. I do three hours on a Friday or Saturday night. I might do four. I think I did four hours on Friday night, and that's my longest stream yet. Oh, man. Well, I've got all that to look forward to. Uh, I've definitely decided I'm going to carry on streaming. I quite enjoy it. You do 15 plus hours on weekends. Wow. Well, I'm weak source. I've got a long way to go. Long, long way to go. I'm also 38. I don't know if I've got the stamina for that. I don't think I can sit down for that long. That's the problem. Even though my job is very much a desk-based job, I have to be up and about. Eighteen or nineteen hours, that's... In my younger days, I could easily have spent eighteen hours playing Football Manager. Not necessarily streaming, but just playing Football Manager. I've not even attempted that now. I've got three kids. I wouldn't have that chance. Maybe I need to. Maybe I need to see if I can drop them off with the uh, the grandparents and I'll just give my wife money to to come and do something. <laughs> thirty. I'm thirty eight. That's ancient. I'm nearly forty. I'm actually. I turn forty next year. I'm thirty nine next month. Forty next year. I'm I'm looking at retirement homes already. So are you going back to streaming again, or is that, that it for you tonight? Right. Uh, yeah, I do. I do at, at least one day a week, usually two, in the office, um, and then like one week a month, I'll do four out of five days in that week on site. Mostly because I just prefer to be on site when I'm working. But I, I don't think I could do. <laughs> if I was working tomorrow in the office, I wouldn't be streaming now. I get up at half five on those days. And I, I need to be in bed by half past ten or I'm useless. That's old age catching up with me again. I am running out of players here. Hmm. Yeah, we are going full second string, I think. Keep Raskin as my token first teamer. So I'm into it. Probably wanted to rest. Oh, am I being too cautious though? Oh, decisions, decisions. No, we're going to do this. We're going to prioritise Aberdeen. We've got to. That's. We're not getting to, into the Champions League through the Europa League, are we? We're getting into the Champions League through the league. That's got to be my focus. All right, Campbell. Cozy Dubrain. Let's, yeah, let's do that. And then we can have Isaacson up front. And then whoever is still available on the bench... They might get some minutes in, but I've got to try and restrict it as much as possible because they are probably all going to start on Saturday's game. And then let's get Callum Stewart, Dean Martin, who else might? Bobby McDonald and Phil. You're one of mine, aren't you? Yeah. There we go. Right, let's go get them.
And this this song Insomnia goes out to you, Ashwin, because you don't sleep, you just scream. Mr. Stamina. Okay, holding on in the first 10 minutes, nothing's happened. Is this our first chance at a goal? No, it might be Schalke's instead. <laughs> now we've got a say, saying over here, you're only as young as you feel. I know I feel about 53, but I reckon you can do it. I mean, you're still doing seven hours streaming, that's... And that's, that's a, a absolutely fantastic attempt. I don't think I could do that. I mean, I, I sit at my desk for eight, nine, ten hours a day working. So, so then go and spend pour more time into streaming. Don't know how much of that I could do, but it's very impressive what you do. We're building nicely until we do that and we still manage to keep hold of the ball somehow there. Shackleton in for Lowry and Lowry who is pretty much a B team player who's only only in the squad to make up some registration rules and he's got a goal. The second string is showing themselves to be okay. Worrying every time Shao could go forward because I know I don't have my strongest squad out there. And small intercepts well. Lowry now. Big ball forward for Isaacson. Can he chase that down? He does well. Forces the error. Oh, you've definitely I've I haven't downloaded it yet, but it's definitely on the list. It's uh it's sort of game I don't think I would normally play, but watching your stream I think I think actually this this is something I'd spend some I could spend some time doing. Between that and my son playing Pokemon, it's got me uh thinking about wanting to play that as well. But I I definitely am gonna give it a go. Definitely am. Oh, and we've conceded. It's to be expected, I think. I hope we can give it a better go in the second leg. But we've just got to accept this first leg is just about keeping bodies fit for Aberdeen. Oh, and Ashwin, I just wanted to say, actually, beyond persuading me with um, with Star Rail, you're, you've persuaded me to keep streaming more than anything else. Um <coughs> I think the, the shouts the shout outs I've had from from you and your channel. Uh, I think I've got a few followers who have uh, joined me just because of you. I've uh, I had yeah I think it was Friday night Saturday night stream. Really enjoyed, really enjoyed, um, and I think you're you're probably the people who sent you're you're probably the person who sent those people over to me that got me. Yeah, I really really had a good night, and I think okay, I'm going to carry on with this. So yeah, thank you, and obviously you only person to um donate to me as well and just yeah like second third stream or something just you popping in and saying good luck on your journey quite inspirational so yeah appreciate that thank you yeah i think genshin impact is the older one isn't it so i think i might try that one first i think i'll start there and, and see how that goes And we have got a second goal here. Well, we're making a better go of this than I expected.
No way. <laughs> um, but it was it was honestly so good of you, and um, I, I don't know if you you'll ever sort of really hear the impact of what things like that do. But it just it inspired me to keep going. It was such a buzz for me to see that pop up on my screen. For a second, I thought, "Oh my god, is this real? Is this actually happening? Oh, am I the victim of a cruel prank?" But it, yeah, that got me through that stream and the uh, yeah the followers from Friday night where I went from six to twelve. Oh, I'm just to keep going. It's uh, yeah, largely largely thanks to you, I think. So I really do appreciate it. Whether my wife appreciates you getting me into yet another game? Well, that's that's another question. And in amongst all of this, we've, we've somehow gone 3-1 up against Shulker. That's... Um, well, that's a surprising one. We've not had as many shots, but they've obviously been a better quality uh, from better better chances. <laughs> oh man, never mentioned your name. Sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, <clears throat> my my wife just thinks that that's all I do anyway, and, and she's right, to be fair, playing game after game after game. <laughs> but it's always Football Manager. I think between that and I do play... Yeah, I just, just I stumbled across it. I just happened to find it. It was an ad. It was an advert. They always advertise these games. I, I'm sure I've seen Genshin Impact on YouTube years ago. So, don't worry, you're off the hook there. Right, let's get some changes made. We've got some tired legs here. Uh, are you your left foot? Yep, yeah, perfect. That's it, yep. Yeah. Add on YouTube. She can't, she can't argue with that. There are so many ads on YouTube. Of course it's going to be from there. Well, we are going to try and waste a bit of time in this game and slow the pace down because we are well ahead of where I expected to be in my wildest dreams. I'm going to get Colombo on for a couple of minutes and... Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, Sorensen, and we'll do a bit of jiggling around at the back. You prefer to be a central defender. There we go. And let's see if we can see this one out. I'm glad I'm <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad you're able to hear it from me because um yeah, when you just starting out there's always this insecurity do people want to come and see me or listen to me in the first place and I mean, I've got just a handful of viewers now so probably not if I'm honest with you but just yeah sort of getting getting a message like that getting you know some viewers sent I've getting getting a raid from you the other day as well just that's fantastic and it really really makes you think actually even, even if I'm just talking to <clears throat> three, four, five people. It, it, yeah, it makes you feel good. It does. Had some good conversations the other night. Got a couple of people who have uh, come back to the stream, and well, just means the world. Genuinely does. Oh, that—that that is a shame, because Isaacson did great for us. Two goals and an assist. He might be a striker, you know. I didn't think much of his scoring abilities, but he played really well. 
I am going to start asking him to train as a striker. <laughs> I'm, I'm all for sinking time into games. I dread to think how much time I spent playing the likes of Skyrim, Mass Effect. And Mass Effect, I must have played that through six, seven, eight times. And if I didn't have, you know, job and family and things like that, could have done a lot more. Oh, that's a lot of money to spend. I'm absolutely certain my wife would kill me if I did something like that. I'd, I'd be told how much money that is. I would be told how much money that is um, on shoes, kids' shoes or clothes. I'd be told how many pairs of shoes I could have bought in that amount of time, how many meals I could have bought for the kids in that time. Yeah, I'd, I'd never get away with that. Right, we're talking down to the team and saying, no, no one's expecting you to win. Excellent. Colombo, I know you're unhappy, but you're the only one, so I'm not going to pander to you, I'm afraid. Okay, over three years, over three years, that's not so bad. And it's the sort of game that I think, from from what I've seen on your stream, has a huge amount of add-on value. And like I said, when I was talking to you on your stream um, yesterday about it, yesterday or Sunday, I forget, but um, it, it, you know, it's, the game's free, so you're going to have to, yeah, you know, people have to spend money on it for it, for it to still be a going concern. And I don't think two thousand a month is uh, is quite where I'd expect to see spending limits, but you know, it's, it's up to up to people. It's, it's their decision. It's their choice. I, I would never personally spend that amount of money, but it's down to them, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> See, something I'm trying to teach my kids about at the moment, because they're all into... Things like Fortnite and Roblox at the moment, that's that's kind of their vibe, but it's, you know, oh, Dad, I want some V-Bucks, Dad, I want Robux, and it's trying to explain to them that a new skin that costs them £10 or £15 or whatever isn't going to change the way they play the game. It doesn't change anything in the game. If it's something that's actually useful... Yeah, okay, I've got a bit more sympathy with the idea of spending money on it, but yeah, I mean, Fortnite's got, in one way, a great model because it encourages people to come and spend huge amounts of money. They've got various different campaigns each month. Yeah, they did the whole sort of Neymar thing for a while as well, didn't they? And then they had, you know, they've got various Spider Man and Marvel tie ins. And, I mean, for, for from a business model perspective is obviously fantastic as the parent of a child or of two children who like to play it it can get expensive if i allow it i don't because i give them a set amount of pocket money and they make the decision on their own that it's just not worth it in the end but you can see how you can see how parents do end up almost in debt because they're just trying to fund their children's habits on a game where all oh, that changes are a few colours on the screen and things like that. But if it, if it's you know if it's something that actually enhances your gameplay, why wouldn't you do it? So I think I was I, you were showing me or showing you on your stream the different characters and the different play styles that you get from those characters. That's somewhat different from here is exactly the same thing, but it looks slightly different. Yeah. That's been a thing ever since, well, mobile mobile gaming. Um, and 
in-game purchases has been a thing. Kids spending money on... Well, <clears throat> back in my youth, it used to be a thing with kids spending money on uh, ringtones. On, uh, you know, their old Nokia phones. And if you dial this number, you can download a, a ringtone for 50p a time or something like that. But it's been around forever. It's just the prices have gone up. The amount of money you can spend has gone insane. Anyway, what I was saying here, yeah, let's get through this. Okay. <laughs> One euro for Jason Derulo. Gosh. Well, that, was a, that was a different era. I saw, I saw, yeah, me more little while ago um, that, yeah, sort of effectively uh, highlighted, yeah, 20, 30 years ago we were trying to, <clears throat> we would be spending money on ringtones paying a pound a time and now we all just put our phones on silent we don't want to hear it ring at all that's hilarious <laughs> yeah even even back then you know you had you'd see a new story about a kid who managed to spend a hundred pounds on ringtones the man on silent the woman on vibrate <laughs> We've got a big game against Aberdeen coming up here. This is... Well, it's almost make or break this one. If we win, second place, and we stay in touch with Celtic. If we lose, title ambitions over, and even Champions League is... It's going to be tough. We will have another crack at Aberdeen in the Championship phase, but... Uh, I don't know. I just can't see it happening if we can't get past them in this one. Right, let's hope I've got enough fit players able to take on the challenge. Let's do Pierre Kowski, I don't think I played you, did I? No, excellent. I did play you though, didn't I? So let's get Okay, I'm going to go with Will Hughes, of all players. Okay, and we'll go Sh Shackleton and Bernardo. We'll have players on the bench who can come on and make a difference, and Will Hughes might not last much past 60 minutes, but don't think anyone else is going to have the legs to do it. Actually, quite happy with the team we are able to put out. That's good. Let's go and do this. But yeah, coming back to in-game purchases, I mean, I, I always used to... Used to worry about the idea of spending it on downloadable content on DLC, and you think, "Gosh, why couldn't that be part of the, the original game?" And it was nothing was quite as um, <laughs> nothing was quite as illustrative of the issues I had when Horse Armor came into Skyrim. Was it Skyrim or was it Oblivion? It was Oblivion, wasn't it? Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Horse Armor, eight pounds just to do make your horse look a bit different and had no actual impact on the game itself that's yeah <laughs> that one got highlighted but you do have so many games now where in-game purchases are kind of part and parcel it's almost expected that some games you, you have to 
I said, World of Warcraft was never one that I got into. So I can't I can't speak to that one. I don't have the experience. But is that, is, I assume that... I mean, it's such a big franchise now, isn't it? I'm, I assume that that's something that they're very good at. Very good at putting things out there that people want to buy. Even if it doesn't have any appreciable um, impact on the game itself. People are going to want it. And Call of Duty became one of those war zone. A free game, you can spend, what, eight, nine pound on a battle pass that lasts you a couple of months, but you can spend hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds on making your character look cool, different. Yeah. And that's what I mean, it's, it's cosmetics, isn't it? That's where I have the biggest problem. If you give me something that changes the game in some way, great. Apex Legends, I think I think I watched a couple of a couple of YouTube videos on that one. I thought that <laughs> actually looks too fast paced for me. Even uh, even Warzone was I was okay at Warzone, but I'm more of a clicky guy. Football manager's my level. That's my pace. <laughs> Did you ever stream Apex or anything like that? Because again, I think it makes a difference. If you're streaming a game, you kind of you almost want to spend that money just to help set yourself aside from everybody else. Oh, and we're one nil down to Aberdeen. That's a problem. Let's give them let's give them a good berating. Well, we are going to go attack him because, as I say, I think losing this one really, really hurts our chances of making the Champions League. And that's more important than potentially not winning the league. So we need to go over it. We need to at least get a draw, if nothing else. Let's get this equaliser. Oh, that was a good opportunity. Yeah, PUBG was a game that I wish I'd I wish I'd spent more time playing because a lot of my friends were playing Warzone. I used to play that with them. But I liked PUBG, I liked the pace of it, and I liked the the way that, you know, you didn't have loadouts and things like that. You would just have what you found in the game. I quite liked the whole the whole concept of the game. And I think it was one of the original battle royales, at least of this this age. And I think I joined when, yeah, mostly you were playing against bots. All right. We need to do something different to get back into this. So let's get Will Hughes off. And we're going to bring on Tyrus Campbell, I think. Let's get four up front. And we're going to go with a poacher and an attacking and advance forward. Oh, that's far from what we wanted. And I think Pierre Kowski has been... He's been behind both of those goals now, I think. So we're going to have to get him off. Let's get... Oh, let's get Louis Al on the pitch and... Shackleton's exhausted, so let's get Mackenzie on. Uh, Raskin on, sorry. And let's go chase this game, and we have to chase it. Oh, 
Oh, that's one. That's one. So in terms of engagement on your streams, which which games give you the best best interactions? Which ones will get people most interested in seeing? I know some of it will be down to you know sort of how much market share there is. There's probably lots of people streaming Football Manager, not so many um, Star Rail, but which have you found to be the most enjoyable? Oh, we've hit the bar. We are still pinning Aberdeen into their box. And that's surely very offside. Alright, let's encourage the team. Is there a chance we can get back into this? Oh... Oh, good save, keeper. Now you're very much a variety streamer. See, when I, when, yeah, when I started streaming a few weeks ago, I only had Football Manager in mind. Oh, it's in. We've got the equaliser. Yeah, I only had football manager in mind, really, because I think I'm fairly experienced with the game, and uh, it's nice to think I'd uh, I'd not be fumbling along, so I'd actually know what I'm doing, not what I'm talking about when I play the game. <coughs> but and it, it's kind of opened opened my eyes. There are there's a lot more than just one game out there. You do see some people who become very specialist, and that's, I think, a good thing. At the same time, you know, people like you will open open people's eyes to, to new games out there in the world. That certainly worked with me. Although I am also the sort of person who's very late to trends. I, um, I only watched uh, Breaking Bad a few months ago like that that was that's years old oh he nearly threw it away there wonder if I'm going too attacking for the situation but I sense blood let's go for the whim You decline if you yeah <laughs> offered money to stream one game for the rest of your life. Would you decline? How much money? Everyone's got their price. So if I offer you, oh oh, that's incredible. Now I think Campbell was offside there, but it's not been given. Um, or oh, we, we're not going to have chance to make any changes. Or oh, are we going to throw it away because I've not been able to click the button? I was still wondering if there was going to be an offside there. Um, okay. Let's just drop you back. You're just going to have to play in the middle. I'll do a bit of that, bit of that, bit of that. You can be my box to box, and let's hope that's enough. A couple of thousand a month, ten thousand a month. If you're offered ten thousand a month, but you've got to play the same game for just a year, oh, it was disallowed. Oh, it was, I'm sure it showed up three two there. That's sad. Well, at least it's not a loss. We can we can cope with that. But it was a terrible start to the game for us. No, I don't praise opposition players. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, 20,000. Just, just a year. 
Don't even have to do it every day. Four, four streams a week. The star contrast your own struggles on. Game confuses me sometimes. I feel feel like we'd be doing quite well. But I wonder if the board are unhappy that I'm not further up the league. I don't think it's the the most bugged I've seen. I've had uh, I can't remember which football manager it was that if you I think it might have been sixteen, but if you got into um, Europe but were in the Championship, so if you yeah qualified through League Cup or something like that in England, it would crash because it could not work out the fixtures. I remember managing to do that with West Ham and yeah that was it game finished couldn't get through it but yeah there's uh, there's plen plenty not to love especially about the match engine I think I know they um, they did the January update which was meant to fix a lot of problems but you still see some very strange decisions from dis defenders and goalkeepers in particular And I've seen I've seen a few. Uh, <laughs> they might have made. I think they've made goalkeepers worse. Defenders. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit defensive for them here. I think defenders are a little bit better. They don't just run off in a random direction anymore. Um, and one of my biggest bugbears was the, the centre back who just stopped still whilst the ball went over his head. But goalkeepers just got stranger. They got absolutely weird. I mean, I've, I follow um, Lelujo on YouTube and, and on Twitch. And uh, in his video, to, in today's video, I think it was, I saw a free kick, hit the bar, go up, defender and uh, goalkeeper just stood by as it dropped and then spun into the goal. Unbelievable. Yeah, attackers did get... And the, the chances that you see missed sometimes are unbelievable. It doesn't matter what level of the game. Some of the chances you see missed are just nigh on impossible. But you still get do get the odd player who just suddenly goes, starts running towards the ball and then decides actually now I'm going to go at 90 degrees. For, for no reason, I'm just going to go 90 degrees away from the ball. Right, I think for tonight we are going to do the Schalke game. See if we can make it into a semi-final against Spurs. I assume Spurs are winning in their, their tie. And then we come back for the Cup semi-final against Hearts. And what I'm going to attempt to do, what I'm going to attempt to do is actually start to set out a regular schedule. I think... It'll be good for me. There will be a late night stream on a Friday or a Saturday night. I might alternate which one I do. But as the summer comes and football, for me, finishes, opportunities abound. Uh, I am on Discord, yes. I think I might be Adwin84 on Discord as well. I will just have a quick peek. Um, indeed. Uh, one seven seven four. So 
the hash 1774. Yep, got your request. There we go. I think I've just accepted that. Yes, I have. Do you do, do you use a Discord server to like notify people of streams? I follow a couple of people who do that. I don't think it's worth doing it at my my size, but one day. I might have to add it onto my Twitch page as uh, one of my socials so people can add me on, on Discord as well. Okay, Piankowski, I've not liked your last two performances at centre-back, so you're not going to play. I'm going to go with Mickelson. He's younger, but he's got something about him. Right, second leg this is. I think this is a good chance for us to get into a semi final. That would feel like quite an achievement for my boys. Okay, the usual problem just anyone who is actually registered on the bench. And then we'll go and pick a few children from my B team. Uh, Welsh normally isn't it Bobby McDonald Callum Stewart and Dean Martin there we go oh excellent that's great oh thank you And that's, that's just, yeah, that's such a nice thing to do. <laughs> allow, you, allow people to, to promote, promote themselves in your Discord server. I don't often say nice things about people, but, but you, my friend, are a good man. Right, let's see if we can get through this leg, uh, get through this tie and find ourselves a nice little semi-final. And hopefully, hopefully that'll uh, keep the board off my back. But we've not started brilliantly, have we? That's not the way to go. You don't concede a goal in the first five minutes and hope to do well. Okay. <clears throat> I can't even encourage them because that will make them all unhappy. Because as far as they're concerned, we are winning. And that's all anybody can do, Ash, and try their best. But your best, well, I mean, it, it, it's, it's very good. Your best is incredible. I think just randomly going onto people's streams and donating, you know, offering me the chance to promote yourself via your Discord server. No, oh, you know, that's not that's not what average people do. So uh, yeah, thank you. It's a really nice offer, and I, I will almost certainly be taking you up on that. Oh, let's close that down. Oh, some desperate defending going on here. But I refuse to go any more defensive than positive. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I don't think it was reeked. 
That's what I need on this channel, don't I? I need some more contrarianism. <clears throat> we need some arguments. We need some uh, some debate. But I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It feels... And it just feels too convenient, doesn't it? Messi finally gets that World Cup. Oh, just as I think we're... We've made ourselves safe in this tie. We go and concede. Is this going to be another... Could we see another terrible pen penalty shootout? Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, everyone was talking about it. It's because it's messy. Do you think if if it had been Portugal though, would people have had the same sort of uh, same sort of view? Would that still be rigged? That's what I think. I always think there's going to be a group of people out there somewhere who will say something's rigged. If it's not Messi and Argentina, is it Ronaldo and Portugal? I don't know. I also don't think that any any body, any government or non-government organisation, I don't think there's any one that's competent enough to be able to pull off something like that. That that's it. That's my argument. Well, I just don't think anyone out there is competent enough to mess around with things like that. That's it. <laughs> Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, let's get Shackleton. Yeah, okay. Let's see what you're like going forward. And Tyrese Campbell has not had the greatest of games, so we'll get Cozy Adubri on. I mean, that's that's true. That's true. Portugal had the winning pedigree, so probably would be more expected. Oh my goodness. Oh, FM's giving me drama. I don't know, Greece 2004 Euros? Was it 2000 or 2004? I can't remember which it was. They were an awful team. They had they they basically lumped it up to the big man up top, and that's all they had. And yet they managed to win the entire competition. Right, Yilmaz is not playing well. Needs to come off. Colombo, who's my Musa? Are you quick? Yeah, you're coming up. I just want you to run, stretch the lines, and we'll save the last sub. It, <clears throat> they did have some decent players, but I mean, if if you look at look at the careers of those players in club football afterwards, I think probably their best player went to Celtic, didn't they? I I don't know. I just don't think they were. I don't think they were the calibre to, to win the Euros, and yet they managed to do it. I mean, yeah, as, as a team, as a team, well, they, they worked hard. It was it was a tactic, and it came off time and time again. Argentina were very much a one-man one man band, weren't they? Oh, we have still got a two-goal lead, but I still don't feel comfortable. And this is why. Oh, oh. Well, we need to waste time. We absolutely need to waste time here. Probably should have done that a little bit earlier. Oh, dear me. Okay, let's make a sub. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. 
Yeah, Raskin's exhausted. Let's bring on Mackenzie. He's being suspended by PSG. I've missed that. What's what's happened there? If it doesn't happen in League Two of England, and even if it does happen in League Two of England, I'm fairly clueless. What's he been suspended for? All right, let's just lump it forward for Musa Barra to chase over the top, and that's where we're going to get some success. And Saudi Arabia without permission. I don't understand why players do that sort of stuff. I've got <clears throat> lots of respect for clubs and managers who stamp down on it. You saw it with Arsenal and Alabama Yang going out to Barcelona, wasn't it? Um, without permission, and they just dropped him. Stripped him of the captaincy and said, well, that's not what you do in our club. That's the way it should be done. It's, all, it's about how the players react to that. Do they react to say, okay, yep, I did wrong. Or do they throw their toys out of the pram like Aubameyang did and end up being sold off and, well, I mean, he destroyed his career. Went to Barcelona and flopped, came back to Chelsea and came back to Chelsea to play for a manager who then left or was sacked uh, and, well, no, no one wants him. Well... In amongst all of that, we made it into the semi-finals of the Europa League. That is definitely far beyond my expectations and we have drawn Tottenham. Now this could make for a... a I mean, I'm beginning to wonder now if the Europa League is my best opportunity. I mean, it's, it's Tottenham. Everyone can beat Tottenham. Dundee Celtic at home, I and mean, that gives an opportunity. Aberdeen at home, they're the two. We need to make amends for these two results right here. We need to make amends. If we win those two games, well, we put ourselves in pole position for the Champions League, and it gives us the smallest, smallest chance to win the league. But the main ones, Aberdeen. If we can beat Aberdeen, then we should be able to overhaul them. Well, it's been it's been a pleasure. <clears throat> it's been a wonderful stream once again. Um, we are going to call it a night there, as we are just a few games away from the end of the season. It's also 11pm, and I am up in the morning for work. So, thank you everyone who's joined and, and watched. Thank you for everyone who's chatted. Ashwin, it's always a pleasure. And I'll try and catch your stream tomorrow. Are you a seven day a week streamer? But either way, I'll try and catch your next stream uh, and come and return some of the love. But uh, thank you very, very much. And I'll see you on the next one.